I think there are several areas which have the potential to uh, revolutionize biology. We're developing many more powerful tools, tools for visualization. Uh, we talked about cryo-EM, but there's also improved light microscopy. Uh, so all of these tools of visualization and tools for predicting structures through uh, computational methods, including AI, uh, all of these things are going to uh, dramatically uh, improve and, and advance biology. Uh, there's also powerful tools for both analyzing ge genomes and genes, but also manipulating genes. Mm. And uh, that's also going to change things. Uh, there's also synthetic biology, the ability to create uh, new biological molecules, including new genomes, mm -hmm. which can do uh, things that biology doesn't do today. Mm. So I, I think all of those things are uh, going to change. And many of them are not only powerful, but they could also be dangerous. You know, you could, for example, synthesize dangerous viruses mm -hmm. or, um, you know, toxic compounds. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, we have to be very careful about how these technologies are going to develop and how they're going to be used. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I just wrote a book about aging, so people are thinking about how to not only make us live healthier uh, in old age, which is a, a widely accepted goal, but some people would like to extend life mm -hmm. beyond our, what our natural biology currently allows us. And, and that's a goal which has lots of social implications and needs to be thought about uh, very carefully.